Hello everyone, how good of you to join. Welcome back to Crown Falls. Welcome back to our skyscrapers. Uh, first level skyscrapers completed. Also shopping mall completed. Also toasters delivered. Toasters make good bread and that makes people especially happy so that we can upgrade them once more. And that is then level two out of five already. And now we get the panorama effect, right? So if I upgrade one of these bad boys here, like for example, this one here, there it is, level 2, the pink one first. <laughs> we do get a panorama effect. And this one is intense, for example, because with every house in the surrounding, every other skyscraper that is a lower tier, we get plus 1 on our panorama Your effect. Up to a level attack. of 2 right now, smaller neighboring skyscrapers, 5. And that means the highest level right now is intense. And this also, for the first time, delivers us a profit out of the skyscraper that we have here, out of this happy investor. Now, I can go ahead and upgrade us a bunch of additional ones. They still have intense, as we can see. There is a neighboring now of four. Um, there is, however, negative one now, because there is one in addition that is taking away some of the panorama there. Donnie likes that once more a lot, because we, with that, we advance to the next level. Also, we advance to more demands right chewing gum and biscuits would be the the next targets here um if i go now with one more like this one here as we can see it is going down to moderate right so we would need to degrade this one there once more to get the intense effect now what is the difference though if i upgrade this one to moderate what we can see is the profit is getting smaller right so it's from 3000 to 2000 profit only that we get per skyscraper i'm fine with that um, so we can have actually uh, one of these here. If I upgrade one more, will it actually go down right away? Yes, it goes to weak. And then there's barely any profit out of these skyscrapers here, right? So that's probably something to keep in mind. Oh, there also continues land. then the quest with Donnie. And someone is not too happy with him. <laughs> Getting buildings too tall is dangerous, someone they say. Now the goal here is now, my next one is the market research and also the reach for the skies, upgrade the engineer skyscrapers. Actually, there's two quests here with the same thing. Uh, we do have a couple of engineers down here especially. Just about. And yeah, it just makes sense also to upgrade them, of course. Let's go ahead and also get us the engineer skyscrapers. They look much darker than the investors. Much more tycoon style. People like gardens, right? Slap a gazebo next to it. Also, we can upgrade uh, those buggers here. So there we have the workers, and that is the pescatarian mod. So we can also go ahead and upgrade them to worker skyscrapers, which is the first level like that one. And we can then go ahead now and provide them with tea and tools to also upgrade our workers. However, it's As still always, not really fitting in, right? I we do have sure. those tiny buildings then and then the skyscrapers in the back right away. Yeah, that's just the transition phase overall that we need to fix somehow. And yeah, also artisans can be in uh, skyscrapers. So let's also get us the first artisans up here. And I think you might like what you see right away. Uh, can we upgrade that one here? Yeah, so that it comes together a bit. Look at that. Whole new models that we have with that. We still need to uh, put the adjacents in, right? So we still need it's to shallow, get this one over. Some there you go. And then it actually adjusts itself also. And this is just looking really cute. Perfect, really. Uh, let's go ahead and have some entrances for these guys. I mean, even though, as we can see, there is the paving, right? So it makes sense to make bigger streets here and be done with it. Ship under attack. Where it definitely makes sense, let's have it a bit closer to the Docklands then, also upgrading a whole bunch of workers now to these blocks that we have then, worker residences, holding a few more people in so we can push our worker force there with that a bit. They also want electricity by the way. Uh, we could also apply the overseas mail to them. This will then solve the worker problem that we've had for a while now. And we could also give them some rum. We have plenty of that as well available. So let's make the worker's life a bit better overall. Ship under attack. Yeah, it looks even better down on the roads. Our new worker residences. Then the artisans. And then also our engineer skyscrapers coming out. And then... The investor skyscrapers in the back.
Another cool thing is with the department store is that we do have now some bonuses out of that. So the toaster sale, for example, gives us an income per house of 5% for every building in its surrounding that is supplied with the toaster. Also some happiness bonus and way more important for us right now, jewelry and light bulbs consumption is reduced by 10 and 15% respectively. That means, yeah, we don't need that many light bulbs all the time and it should also ease a bit more on the storage that we have. Let's continue onwards with some more things that we need to unlock. We do have the, the 2,000 research points. That building, means we can now go with another campus building extension. And I think, I think, I think, I think we can still go crazy with the amount of engineers that we assign. Yep, up to 7,600. Ah, let's make it 6,500 so we still have some engineers left. And this takes then 16 minutes. And then we can also continue here with the next uh, scholars that we have. By the way, there is some farmers here that we can upgrade along the museum of course this is going to be artisans and engineers down the road and that's that oh there's also a whole block up here that has been destroyed we should be careful there i think there is yep for example no no fire station really so let's provide a fire station to the area and yeah police they should not need we continue onwards all the way now up to the, the crown folds themselves because, yeah, I finally want to start with our palace construction. First, what we need to do is we do need to compensate a bit for the destruction of uh, timber and locks that I'm going to have. So let's just try and move a few of them a bit further away. Of course, the documents can compensate quite a bit, but for now... um. I would like to use it like that so that we still have some timber production here in Crown Falls right away. Oh, I think some of them will not get the 100%. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Should be working fine. Uh, we actually took the trees with us there as well for some of them. Not all of them, as we can see. Um, and then we got the, the logging camps here. So that's six, seven on them and plus two more timbers. Let's try to get the timber there with us um, once more because I, I'm, always, I'm always in need of timber. And perhaps... All the way here. This looks good with 100% that we get each. Of course, it's a bit too many warehouses there. Looking a bit chaotic right now, but it's just temporarily that we have them. And then we just get rid of the rest. Right, so off you go. That's all the, the logging camps that disappear now. We should really just quickly check out my consumption of logs now. Uh, it is at 160, a whopping 160. Um, the difference here is a whopping 83, 83 that we have right now. So that's around 1,600. Let's make it 1,800. Let's make it yeah 2,000 logs. Just going to say that we do need around 2,000 logs. Um, I think the soap will be not okay with that. I think we will have to use the the sewing machines or the steam motors. Now, steam motors, we're already going in here. Yeah, let's use the sewing machines there once more because <laughs> it's just much less, right? So, 86 tons only of sewing machines with the legendary level. So, it barely scratches us there. Uh, the soap is just totally weak in comparison, really. Um, and we can't use that much soap anymore because it's already dropping pretty hard. And the steam motors we need for other things. So, sewing machines it is to counter all of that here as well. Now we do have one, a 2,100 storage capacity, so we should be fine really for all of that. I might still consider adding a few more storages, um, especially then here with my with my dock lens. But for now, we could also just have a few more storages over here where we already have some farming area, right? <laughs> so our sand mines, and then perhaps also here make it look like it's actually a harbor area, a smaller one that we have. Your ship has returned it's much from better. Its All right, Dreadnought also comes into Mbesa, uh, the third Dreadnought. It's a, the heat is rising a bit in Mbesa, right? So she's she's sending a, a few more ships over all the time and destroying my coastal buildings. I can't afford that. So I'm just going ahead here with oh, also my water pump. Very interesting. And so I do need to send over more ships. That, that leads to three Dreadnoughts now in the area. Protecting my Horizon settlements. Right, with all of that out of the way, it is time to build us the palace. 
And I think we can start right away with the main building. Of course, I should build it right away from scratch to the finish line. So all the modules that we need so that I know the maximum extent of it and also can build around it. Uh, let's just find us a suitable central location for it somewhere over there. Yeah, and in that case here, it will need a direct connection though with the road. That is my that is my goal. Let's build the palace first and then we align it with the main road, I should say. Alright, there we are now. The palace itself is finished. Um, let me just know what you think about that design and if you have any further suggestions, we might go for it. Though, bear in mind that we are very close now to the module limit and I think I can build around... Mm, yeah, one more. <laughs> so we are actually really capped then on it already. Um, and in the background, we also have some smaller wings here that we can use for ornaments. Alrighty, um, I think it's now time to assign, uh, to align the whole thing here, right? So um, going too far over there is not my goal. We might just have it somewhere here. We now have the required purpose to expand the campus. Now for the final location, um, it is important that we also consider in the botanical gardens that I would like to have in front of it, right? So we do kind of like have the gardens that lead to the palace, or we combine the, the gardens with the palace somewhere over there. We have several options available here for this. Let's just have it a bit further over in on that side here at the moment, because with that, I will be able to um, have a bit more room to jiggle around. And also, we can, of course thanks to the new movement tool, move the whole thing, including the ornaments. That was not possible before. Um, so there we get a lot of freedom in addition. Um, so nothing is nothing is really set in stone here. Let's just move it a few more paces over. Um, I would really like to sign it with uh, the main road. So that would be one more. One more tick. Right. And then we can have the the main road going right into, into the center there. Very good. Connection has been established. Let's just make a paved road going all the way through then here so we we, we should forget shouldn't forget that we still need a, a road connection with the palace itself right otherwise it does not count uh, for its influence and as we can see the whole city is getting affected now thanks to having the maximal uh, module limit used for this one here bear in mind not from the beginning right so if we start it now um, only a, s a fraction of the the whole influence will be will be finished then as we do need really to finish the whole palace before we get the maximum range out of it that's that um and then we also have then here the roads leading out also. grocer all right i'll take it <laughs> yeah at this point it should also be noted that it's probably advisable to just upgrade a few more a few more roads down here as well so that it doesn't look so nasty and let's also get rid of of those there at the moment and here we do have then kind of like a a, a buffer to the palace it, uh, to the palace itself that I'm not going to, to use then for anything else. So we should, probably should check it out. Uh, it's in a new world. Once again, it's just one battle cruiser doing nasty work. Um, we do have the Conqueror. Uh, the Conqueror, let's assign a new patrol road because they're camping, right? These battle cruisers, they're really camp. And I would like to make the patrol route a bit bigger, a bit larger, so that the ship takes in more and yeah, gets rid of, uh, get rid of them. Also, <laughs> my bonus items have arrived. So, handguns. I found a few. Handguns. Right, another damage shot increase. Um, I think some of them do not have all Ready the items yet. And this one here, for example, comes to mind. So, this one will receive some boosting there right away. With Romanov, with the handguns. 
and Vice Admiral and Romanov. There you go. Firing really, really engine. pushing its damage. Oh yeah, right. We got the 18 pounder. Uh, we can't, we can't combine them like that. And then we got some HP point increases there as well to further boost its its output. And Drave and Gast, of course, to boost the damage against buildings. Very important Loading that we stations. get a few of them along. If we want to have sieges on the islands, we will need lots of them as well. High damage on buildings. Yeah, without that, with that, with that in mind, let's get the cargo ships back to the pirate to purchase more items. And yeah, we got now all of these dreadnoughts here really fully equipped Your with item boosts, with uh, HP boosts. What is... what was that? Your island is under I don't even want to know, I guess. Alright, that ship is just fleeing now from the, the dreadnought that we have. Firing By the way, the let's just destroy it there. I mean, chances of survival are really slim for it anyway. But as we can see, oh yeah, there's a few more here now. A battleship patrolling the area and we probably will have to use some of my dreadnoughts here to clear it we continue onwards with the palace though let's build it there you go with all the materials really that we had and with that palace ground foundations completed we have now the whole area being affected by it I'm really surprised how well the game is doing such a, so late into the game. And yeah, with that, we can now then work on the ornaments for it. Uh, we can also already work now on the policies. And that is one of the primary reasons, of course, why we built the palace. Of course, it looks epic, but it's also pretty important to use the policies for it. For example, 30% reduced need for all goods that are affected by town halls. We could also go with plus one influence for all engineer residences close to town halls. This gives me nothing because we don't have any re engineer residents close to a a town hall, though we might change this in the future, right? 30% um, reduced though, for all residences uh, with town halls. That is actually affecting quite a lot of people, especially my investors. Let's go ahead with this. Can we see this on the on the map? No, we cannot see this. What is affected by it? Uh, by the way, we also get some passive bonuses here. So 20% chance of receiving a specialist at the public mooring. We get 50 uh, island workforce per town hall. 10% uh, productivity for production buildings within the range of trade units. That is really good, by the way. So all my trade units in my industrial Still zones are being affected by that. Um, then we get the 10 area of influence for all public buildings. So with that, we do get um, a nice boost on my... On my public buildings, that there you go, right? So they have a bigger range then, basically, and 200 tons island storage per harbor master building. Does this affect us already? 400 tons in addition we get out of this bonus here already. Now for the other policies, one reward from the World Fair, 10 influence per museum module. That is really good, pushing us to 115 right away. That means that um, um, museum built items or museum plots no longer cost me influence right as we get the influence back right away and this saves us a bit of that already um next one is extra goods from farms extra goods from heavy factories is something that i would really like to go with and that is affecting now all my all my industry buildings that are surrounded by trade unions as we can see and that's quite a lot right so there's another nice boost of income next up we do have three attractiveness for artisan and engineer residences um that are connected with a variety theater basically all of them as we can see and this is really huge right so enticing metropolis we're boosting us now to impeccable metropolis a flawless ineffable beauty like moon dust settled upon ice shards so there is a a nice boost basically now for our whole one and with that we also unlock more policies once more this is just really cool and with that we do get um plus one item slot for town halls right which is Actually pretty good, right? We can go ahead with this and boost the, the town halls even further. Um, with this one here, we get now the attractiveness per completed set Ship or the zoo attack. modules. No, we don't need anything here. Um, then we have the 50% workforce reduced or 50% productivity from, elect, uh, from electricity. I think this is even better than the first one, right? Because with this one, we are getting another 50% boost out of it. Oh, by the way, don't forget, we also have a 50% increased consumption with that. So let's rather go with skilled labor act for now. And then this one here, we, can, we, we still keep the three attractiveness. I think we're going with that forever. And then we also have something for the harbor. 300% productive for all coastal buildings. Uh, island storage, island storage, oil storage. Um, we could go with, yeah, this is actually really good. 50 tons more per thing. And that is 300 tons more of storage capacity that we have, right? Um, yeah, let's go ahead with this one. So really nice boost overall. 
Also, my chronicles get a new entrance. Unveiling of Paris Hell's government's ambition for more efficient lawmaking. Extra refuses to reveal how extravagant buildings cost will be paid for. And we're going to talk about the costs later at some point, of course. Now, there is still the, 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 the policy uh, that buildings around the engineers surrounded by a, a, a town hall are getting the influence boost. And this, unfortunately, after all the patches still, does not count as a town hall. Shift so all of these time. houses here surrounding it are not being affected by the boost that the palace provides. Um, I'm not going to cheat now and say that I want to build another town hall here and we're boosting those here by six items, which would be possible. But we're going to use this district here that is full of engineers, right? So this is primarily engineers to boost them now with the influence bonus that we have. And we got a couple of new buildings available. A couple of buildings that we can use now because we've entered the age of skyscrapers, right? So we do have skyscrapers in the city already, by the way. Yes, we can. We could go ahead here. We have a bunch of them here. Um, let's go ahead and have the next bunch of skyscrapers then as well. Because I would really like to, to use now my new town hall. Let's get rid of the marketplace and the pub in this area. We don't need that since everything here is engineers. And there is now the new town hall building which is a skyscraper surprisingly and it is counting hopefully as a town hall right so this one and we can use it then to boost our citizens juicily with items let's go ahead and have it right over there and as we can see there's already a nice a nice entrance area that we have for this one that we can and should use probably i would like to have some real paving there the building itself already has ornaments in board right so it it usually is a very difficult thing to then use ornaments on top of that because it always looks a bit strange. Let's just have it like that for now. It doesn't cost me influence. Just some elevators, right? And I would like to see if this counts as my as my bonus for the influence. It does. Very good. We do get 70 influence in addition out of uh, these guys here. Righto. That is just perfect. Um, we can also boost them now with some sexy items, right? We got quite a few of them available. And what we can see here is the two radiuses, right? The first one is the modded radius for this town hall. And the inner one is the standard town hall radius that we get out of the palace. So we cannot exploit the modded area of effect for our engineers, right? As, as nice as this was, uh, would, would be, actually. But we can go with, ahead with that one. So we got a nice skyscraper town hall over there. Um, and then this whole area would also need one. However, I'm not going to use the skyscraper version on that. Mm, let's just see. We should be able to use the normal one in here. Yeah, we'll need to move a few more buildings over. Just those. And that one. And that one. <laughs> let's stop here. And yeah, there we can go. Right, so we can also now affect a few of the engineers here for my next town hall. This is also a modded version, a tiny skyscraper um, that we have. 20 influence it costs me. However, with the, the bonus, we should actually push it up there to 230, right? So we get, yeah, around 50 influence on top of the on top of everything, right? And this uses the smaller radius right away, the standard one. This one uses the bigger radius. However, as we can see for the palace, the smaller one counts. The same goes for this whole district now. With that, yeah, quite a few engineers are being affected by the bonuses now. And of course, we can still min-max this in the future. For now, though, we have now sexy town halls. Quite a few of them. This one actually fits much better to my current skyline, right? Well, this one is then better for the for the next one that comes up. We can also change its appearance there to look a bit taller even. Let's go with the smaller version for now. That's that. A few more. Another tower here in the in the area. And a nice influence boost, by the way. 200 in total that we have now in addition available. And I would like to use this on what? Of course, Dreadnought building. Dreadnought construction. Let's... Yeah, we could actually go with four more Dreadnoughts in addition now um, to boost our fleet to prepare against Miss Hunt. Last but not least, another building permit extension completed. That means we can have a few more scholars in the area. Let's have those three and those two. And that's it already. Again, right? Um, it, it will be filled up right away. Well it should actually soon challenge. lead now to the unlocking of electricity, which will be another huge boost to my population. Uh, for now, though, I think we should be able to get at least one more. No, we cannot. We need 3,000. Yeah, we'll reach that though, as we only need 50 more scholars now and the five new buildings are affecting that right away. They are moving in now, going to take a while, but once finished, we will be able then to go for the next extension permit right away, as also my research district grows. But so far, the palace grows 
And now we only really need some influence, uh, some some ornaments then around it. Ship under attack. And of course, also our main road that goes all the way up here. And in the in the palace grounds itself, we can then use uh, the the palace paving, of course, that we have. I think, except for this one, as I probably will want to have some roads going outbound there as well. Of course, into this into this area there as well, and this one probably into my botanical garden. So we're going to going to combine it then here into the botanical gardens that we also need to build. Stay tuned. <laughs> 